night. The solution, pick an area near to the front of the library, angle the books so they jump into the eye line when you come in. Position the display, go stand at the door, walk in, work out, is it best there, there, there? Turn it, okay, so that people see it as they come in. Create small, manageable choices. You're not doing this with the whole of the library. You're just making some little hot spots, okay, for the three out of four who like that approach. And then keep the display topped up, because this is another great statistic from your American guru. Usage of any merchandised unit falls off steeply when it's 70% full or less. Not 50%, not even half full, 70%. If you let it go below 70%, you might as well give up. They're not going to take from it. Here's some examples, same table units. This is the whole ground floor of a UK library, a fairly recent one. And this is the self-service to the left. Left. This is the transit area as you come in. Two of those tables, boom, right in your eye line. They really perform. Another one, this again is just near the entrance. They work in all kinds of settings. Here's a much more traditional Victorian library. You can also, in a large library, make mini quick choice or books to go areas in different places. This is biographies. They're all, but they're all, it doesn't say so, it just says books to go. Very different feel in another building. And this is one from Norway, in case you're thinking that you don't understand the language. Um, and that's actually quick choice in Norwegian. Um, and uh, they are using these same ideas since we brought them over there. Okay, um, let me see the time. I want to show you some nice pictures of other things as well. But is anybody bursting with a question at this point? No, okay, I'm going to crack on then. I want to talk a little bit about what lies behind the whole of this work. I didn't start off doing furniture design or library design. I started off wanting to get people reading. And I ended up with making the books just more attractive because that's so critical in doing it. But the key approach this has come out of is what we call the reader-centered approach. It's starting to think about how you promote books, not from the author's point of view or the genre, but from the reading experience. Start at the consumer, start at the other end. Think about why, how people read. How does reading fit in their lives? Because you have to make that connection with people if your promotion is going to work. And I'm going to give you a quick example here of um, a promotion which we ran across the country of Wales in all their libraries. And we were aiming it at people aged 20 to 30. And they did a little bit of research trying to work out what was the key things in people's lives 20 to 30. And what they discovered was they were very busy. Lots of them were in their first job. Uh, some of them had their first child, so it was like early parenting, all of those kind of things. And some of them were not in a job at all and were bored stiff. And some of them who were in a job would like to be doing extreme sports in Australia instead. Um, so, you know, you've got a whole range of different things there. And we came up with a promotional idea called Give Me a Break. Give me a break from stress. Give me a break from the kids. <coughs> These are the images used. Give me a break from it all. Sometimes you just want to be true. Have a curl up with a book, chocolate biscuit. This is the website. And you can see it's aimed, the, the language of it's quite young. A boss getting you down, kids driving you nuts, bored out of your skull. It doesn't have to be like this. Whatever it is that's getting you down, we've got the antidote. Choose what it is you want to break from and find yourself an escape route. And down the left, you could click on any of these things and you've got a little selection of books. A short break or a long break, it was just short books or long books. Easy done. And you would get some books. If you didn't like those, there were a few more. And what was good to train the staff up, we haven't got the actual one that's there because somebody's borrowed it. Can you suggest another one? It's a very different way of thinking. We could have done great Welsh writers that you should have read and feel guilty about. <laughs> <laughs> or we could have done new Welsh writers that you haven't ever heard of. There are some of those in here, no problem. But don't call them that. Call it, give me a break, and lots more people will take a book from it. There's a slogan in advertising that conjures this up really well, and it's sell the sizzle, not the sausage. 
Sausages are comfort food, aren't they? They're home food. In the UK, if you get a company advertising, it's probably American company, Walls, advertising sausages on television, what they'll do is they don't show you a great big picture of that greasy, <laughs> pink, grey thing and tell you, you know, what's the fat content? No, thanks, Delano. What else is in it? No, I don't want to know anything that's in it. They don't do that. They conjure up the experience of eating sausages and where it fits in your life. And in England, that's quite often a sort of family-cooked tea, evening tea, a meal, just with the, the kids coming in from school, with the, uh, the parents coming home from work, and you open the front door of this house, and there's the sausages sizzling in the pan. You start to hear them, you start to smell them, and you just want those sausages. And they create the desire in you for the sausages. They don't have you, you know, standing in front of the supermarket with that frozen, wet, pink, plastic pack, okay? <laughs> But when you are standing in front of the supermarket with that frozen, wet, plastic pack, they want you to think, whoa, if I buy that, that experience is mine. That wonderful warmth and cosy family feeling. That kitchen that's so much nicer than the one I've got. Those kids who behave so much better than mine do. It's all mine if I just buy these wall sausages. That's the way advertising works. Yeah, I don't need to tell you that, okay? But we can learn from that, okay? We have to sell the sizzle of reading. And that's not the individual sausages. And if you can grasp this, it really does help libraries, because we often don't have enough of the sausages everybody wants. So one of the things we have to do is persuade people to take the sausages we've got. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> this is a great way to do it. But it's also back to that cultural role of opening up reading choices, of actually actively helping people find something different to read from what they might have taken before. It's more flexible for libraries. If you haven't got enough copies, you can top it up with anything else. This is typical children's library sign in the UK. And this is what I would call the sausage approach. There's not a lot of sizzle about that. How the books are arranged. I mean, I can understand the logic, but oh my God, if I as a child had to understand all that before I could take a book out, you know, when you go to the store, do you have to understand the barcoding on the carton of milk before you can buy it? No. It's madness. It's madness. You know, you have to have those to manage it. Of course you do. But don't try and make everybody else learn it. You know, I don't have to learn Walmart's barcodes. They do that for me. Okay? This is worth thinking about. But that just is, it's just so confusing. I, I, you know, it's bad enough as a child learning to read, let alone having to learn all this as well. Not good. This is what we use instead, that's a sizzle. That's a sizzle. That says, this is the experience waiting for you. This is what you're gonna get. And they all want that. There it is in a library. That's actually a school library. Uh, where they made a, a nice place for fiction for the older kids and some big cushions. And you can see on the right here, there's a book pod as well. So I think our role is to open up reading choices. We need to appeal beyond the standard genres. When you do a standard genre display, a crime display, a romance, science fiction, that's great for the people who love that. And they'll go straight to it, but they would have gone to the crime shelves anyway. And all the other people who say, I hate crime, just walk straight past it. And there are books in there they'd love. How can you get those books out to speak to those people? We have to mix it up. You can do a lot mixing fiction and non-fiction. That's really interesting too. You can bring books from different parts of the library together. One of the things you'll discover if you do an observation physically is that people don't penetrate that far in the library space. They don't always get to the back of the library. So there's books there, hidden, okay? One of the very first observations we did, I've never not told you this one yet, but it's a classic in England, was a librarian, she watched the fiction A to Z, okay? She watched for two hours, and she came to me after two hours and said, you know, not one person got past the letter G. They all browsed up to G and they either took a book or they gave up. Now that library thought it was very neutral in its promotions, but boy, if you were an author, STW, you'd be pretty fed up. <laughs> <laughs> this is just human nature. In a school library reversed the whole sequence and tra transformed what people took. Now you can't do that in a big library. You can't move that amount of perfection at once. It's impossible but you can pull some of the W's or some of the Dewey subjects that are way, way at the back of the library into a little display at the front and give them their chance. And that's what we need to do. We also need to think about the human psychology of it, the sizzle though. We look to create interest through humor, discovery, 
and shared reading experience. So these are some of the images that we use, and we're just in discussion at the moment about bringing some of these to the States. Uh, and uh, Broda would then uh, be selling them along with our food. So yeah, it's, and you can see that just, that just, how does reading fit in your life? It's nice. This one was so popular in the UK, we had students asking for it. It was the coolest promotion we ever did. They wanted the poster. And that thing of, you know, everything's straight in life, but every so often. And of course, if you ask people to take a risk on a book, they feel they don't have to finish it. So they'll actually try something that they wouldn't have otherwise tried. It's a way to broaden things. Because, well, I only just took a risk on it. It didn't work out. Fine. We have to stop people feeling they've got to finish every book because then they'll never start a book they wouldn't finish. Another nice one is an advert for libraries, celebrating everything about what is great about a library. It's free, but it also allows people to be free. So you can have all the you know, democratic tradition, all of that, but you've also got that thing of, you know, all the mad people who use libraries. Our libraries are full of mad people. And our staff are very good with mad people. I think it's a great strength of the public library tradition that it deals with it. the eccentric, the weird, the peculiar. You know you've all got them. You know, who else celebrates that? Um, fantastic. <laughs> it's an important part of our culture. We treat them just the same as we treat anybody else. Where else does that happen? Another nice one, journeys. Could be the Amazonian jungle, could be the city, but lots of different ways to take that. One to appeal to men, one more female perhaps, but again, what do you put in indulgence? So there could have a lot of things. You could have aromatherapy, you could have cookery, you could have fiction, you can mix things up. Okay? This is one we use for children a lot, and these are also children's ones. I have to say, when I used this one in um, Scandinavia, they did say it ought to be a bright green apple and not a cake. <laughs> but I'm not sure that would quite have the sizzle that I want. So, yeah. That thing of wanting to be scared. They're just great images, really. <laughs> Different age groups. And that's the sort of thing we do, there it is in a library, with a very small collection of books. That's just six books face forward with six books behind, but a little sign on it, thought through to target that audience, positioned where that boy will find it, that's how it works. <laughs>